Hi guys, Steady Eddie here. Uh, looking a bit bedraggled. I've, um, <laughs> I've just come back from my daily two hours of exercise. It involves an exercise bike and a speedy walk up a county lane and back. Two hours every day. Um, <clears throat> what, did, what did Teddy Wogan used to call it? Fight the flab. That was his catchphrase, wasn't it? Fight the flab. Well, I'm fighting the flab and I'm pleased to say that I'm winning. Well, I'm, I'm off on my travels in about uh, five or six weeks' time, and hopefully by then I'll be nice and trim. And, uh, you know, you, you know, yeah, I'll, 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 it's, it's looking good anyway. I'm feeling better already for what it's worth. Okay, so what I want to talk about is, um, is Thailand, basically. It's, the, the peak season is coming up soon. And many people will be heading out there. I know some people already have. Uh, yeah, you know, for the for the Western winter and the Thai uh, peak season. So, what's it like out there right right now? Well, I'm pleased to say that, that all that pandemic stuff seems to be out of the way with. I mean, when I was there earlier this year, it was really negative. And but I'm pleased to say that that all of that seems to be a thing of the past uh, right now. Thank God. We can now go to Thailand without anybody shoving a bloody plastic thing up our nose, uh, bunging us in a quarantine hotel against our will, or <clears throat> you know, paying an extortionate amount for a PCR test and sitting there, you know, urgently waiting for your for your mobile phone and to get that all important text mas message back to say that uh, you've tested negative. I think, oh, I don't think anyone wants to return to those days. So it's looking a lot better for people going to Thailand this peak season. So what awaits us in Thailand this year? Uh, now that the pandemic's over and we've got the green light uh, for, for everything, will it be back to the good old days of bar girls, beer bars and bar fights? Is, is, is all that gonna be the same as it was before? Well, not exactly. You see, after that long, drawn-out pandemic took its toll, um, the word is that things are not quite the same in, in uh, Thailand, the resort of Pattaya and places like that, uh, as they were before, uh, mainly regarding the bar girls. Now, it was noticeable when I travelled around Thailand early this year that the standard of bar girls was not really what it should be. Well, to be honest with you, during that pandemic, I mean, nothing was what it should be. But um, the quality of the girls certainly wasn't what you remembered it be before. Uh, the girls seemed to be older and, well, I know it sounds a bit unkind, but not a, not a good quality. I mean, not so many 25 and, and 30-year-olds uh, working in the bars. They were more like 35, 40, maybe even beyond that. Um, <clears throat> not so many hot, sexy ladies. Uh, more like uh, uh, cold, worn-out old trollops. Okay, I know, I know that sounds a bit, bit unkind, but you know, you, you, you know what I mean. So, what are the reasons for this? Well, the main reason, of course, is that long, drawn-out pandemic. Two years of bar closures, lockdowns, no flights, no tourists. Uh, a lot of those girls simply went back to their villages, and you can't blame them. I, I mean, you, you know, no tourist means no money. So now that the pandemic is over, have all those lovely Thai girls uh, returned to places like Pattaya? Well, it doesn't really look like it. Uh, it seems that some of them have found o o other, other avenues to ply their trade. When I was travelling through Thailand early this year, I met up with a subscriber to this channel. Uh, we were sitting in a bar somewhere, and there was a couple of, uh, you, you know, older working girls, uh, you, you know, at the at the bar also. Now, by now, I, you, you know, I, I couldn't really get motivated by any of the girls that I was seeing. Um, at the end of the day, you either fancy someone or you don't fancy them. Uh, but I said to my my. Uh, my, my friend in, in the bar, I said bluntly, be honest, do you really feel sexually attracted towards these Thai girls that you're seeing? And his answer was, if I'm brutally honest, about 90% of them, no. I have to agree, I mean, don't get me wrong, Thai girls are beautiful, but the ones that I was seeing around in the bars uh, as I was travelling around Thailand were, were not really my, my cup of tea. Uh, you know, like I say, you either fancy 
a girl or you don't fancy it. And I just, I just didn't really, not really done it for me, to be honest with you. So what exactly has happened to all the, all the hot Thai girls? Where are they? Well, a lot of uh, bar owners in places like Bataya uh, are, are saying that, uh, you know, they're struggling to get girls. You know, I mean, they, they, there's not, not that many girls around uh, to, to work in the bars. Uh, but I think the shortage of girls in the bars, I think maybe it's not just a pandemic. I think there could perhaps be another reason. So anyway, I'm going to read something that a Thai expat uh, sent, sent me on Facebook. Um, he's, he has some interesting ideas about this. His question is, has the quality of bar girls dropped over the years, and if so, why? Well, this expert reasons that bar girls are nowhere near the quality of years gone by. In his words, I seem to remember the days when I could fall in love with a bar girl in nearly every bar I went in. Now I need to go in a few bars to found, find one that I would bar find. Well, as he says, a lot of these bar girls come from the region of Isan, and during the Vietnam War, most of the US air bases were in Isan. Uh, when the GIs left, a lot of the girls could speak English, and so headed to the red light scenes of Bangkok and Pattaya. So, why is there a shortage of hot young Thai girls around these days? Well, a large part of it is due to a fallen birth rate over the years, so each generation brings less hot totty than the previous one. Isan Man, that's, what, that's uh, what this guy's name is, also goes on to say that Isan is not as poor as it once was. People there are now better educated, and also in places like Udon Thani, the red light scene is more aimed at middle class uh, uh, Thai customers. There are still plenty of Farangs in Udon Thani, but about 40% less bar girls than 20 years ago. Isan Man, who has been in Thailand since the 90s, says that about 20 years ago, bar owners in the red light areas of Thailand would say they had girls turning up all the time for work, but even before the pandemic, the numbers were on a decline. I think this has changed the whole dynamic of the bars, as they have to pay the bar girls more, increase bar fines with less girls. This means less lady drinks, which is a major source of income for the bars. So, with the peak season coming along soon, is it going to be rocking and rolling with, with uh, uh, lovely bar girls uh, in, in places like Bataille, the way it once was? Well, that pandemic was, you know, that was a long time. And this peak season is actually going to be the, the first real proper peak season in three years. Notice that I used the word proper. Um, you know, the, the previous uh, peak season during the pandemic were not really the way that it should be. So this is going to be the first proper one when um, there's no pandemic and everything should be, you know, the way it, way it should be. But things have changed. You know, a lot can change in, in three years. And, um, and also, don't forget the rise of dating apps and stuff like that. Thai girls have found other ways of making a living. So, do you think there'll be a fresh wave of farm girls heading down to Bangkok and Pattaya this peak season? Well, according to Isan Man, Isan is not like it was 25 years ago, and it no longer has a bottomless pool of bar girls. He says the number of good-looking Thai girls willing to work as bar girls is 35 to 40 percent down on what it was years ago, and the number is going to shrink as the years go by. So, only time will tell what this year's peak season will bring to Thailand. But I think Isan Man makes some very, very good points. He's got some good information there. Um, I think there'll still, still be plenty of really, really uh, lovely bar girls around in places like Pattaya, just as not as many as there were before. And also, there is more of an influx of the older ladies, if you like that sort of thing. So, if you want quality, you're going to have to pay big money for it. That's the reality of the way it is in Thailand right now. I, you know, I hear that, you know, bar fines are constantly increasing and they're not going to go back. Uh, they're, they're quite expensive now. I'm hearing that the Thai girls are calling the shots left, right and centre. This is what I'm hearing from a, a, a lot of people. Uh, you, you know, they can work in whatever bar they want and be picky and choosy. And of course, the Thai girls will work in any bar that pays them the most money. You can't blame them. They're motivated by money. So that's the way it is. Good for them. That's the way it is, guys. It seems to me that in this day and age, the ball is very, very much in the Thai girls' court. 
or um, <coughs> to put it in another old-fashioned uh, British way, they've got you by the short and curlies. Well, nevertheless, I'm looking forward to my travels, which is coming up in about six weeks' time. I can't wait. I'm looking forward to it. Um, I'm looking forward to the hot weather. I'm looking forward to getting away from Britain. I'm also looking forward to the scales. I mean, I'm doing two hours exercise a day. I'm loving it. I've got my enthusiasm for exercise back. And hopefully you're going to see a lighter, leaner, steady Eddie uh, come this year's peak season. OK, so thanks for watching, guys. Have a lovely day, a lovely evening or whatever you're doing. And I'll see you soon. Cheers.